So the next one that I would throw in yeah. is um, the difference between manager and director is mm. directors now have to start aligning. Mm. And what I mean by that is you have to care about what your peers doing to your left and to your right. Mm. At the manager level, not so much. You don't have to do that. You can just focus on your job and your team's work. Right. But at the director level and every level above that, you've got to start dedicating time to making sure you're noticing, hey, what's she doing over there? And what's he doing over there? And spending time having those conversations so your groups mm. are marching in the same path forward. And you also have mm. to recognize that when you make decisions, mm. they, are, um, they have system implications. And so you need to yeah. be thinking about like, should I talk to HR about this? Should I talk to my boss about this? You gotta be thinking about the implications. At the manager level, right. your system's pretty contained. At director level, mm. you can, you're touching a lot more. Yeah, that, that word system level implications is so important, right? It's, yeah. um, a lot of times what we find is, uh, and we talk about this at business school too, is that a lot of times organizations are designed for constructive tension, right? Totally. So you have marketing and sales and finance um, yeah, you all work for the same company. You're not trying to backstab each other, but we're not letting any one of the groups like run ahead. So what that means the is- The problem when I, mm -hmm. I'll show with you yeah. is all, nothing that comes to mind is just analogies, all analogies. You know, that's how people think. I mean, think what people think. People remember analogies. So here's the analogy for this, Do which it. is what you were saying. Do it. Every organization's a car. Mm. Some functions are gas pedal functions. Love some it. functions are brake pedal functions. <sighs> sales is sales is sales is gas. gas. Sales yes. is gas. Yep. And, and finance is break. That makes sense. Compliance is break. Legal is break. Marketing is gas. I mean, it's and if you have all gas pedal functions, mm. it's a fun ride and you go off the cliff <laughs> in about three months, right? right? And if you have all brake pedal functions, True. you never leave the parking spot. Yeah. But you need both. And those are intention. And so, great analogy. Uh, it makes me think too, though, like so much, like you said, align, align, getting alignment across the different functions so important at the director level. Yeah. Right, because uh, you're really at the point of friction between those different systems, right? Yeah. And I don't know for me, like, I kind of hate alignment, right? It's like such <laughs> a well. The reason I say that it's kind of a necessary evil. It is. Like, given a choice, you wouldn't spend too much of your brain space on that, right? And so, I guess a couple thoughts. One is um, organizationally, there's companies where getting alignment is easier than others, right? And then, so in those companies that have a culture, they have a mission, they have a purpose, which you're a big fan of, where overall we have a sense of what the commander's intent is, where we're headed, more or less, I'm gonna give you a little bit of grace, even though it's not perfect, we know where we're headed, and more yeah. or less, we're aligned, yep. right? And then there's also organizations where, no, you actually have to have a meeting or a series of meetings to make sure that we haven't offended each other. Right? Totally. And that's just so much work to make that happen. Um, you know, Peter Drucker, who we're both a fan of, says that, um, you know, 50% of meetings are a waste of time, right? And that meetings are a sign of organizational dysfunction. Yeah. Right? So, you know, just think from a marriage perspective, if you have to have like a family summit every time you're making a decision, uh, that's a problem. Yeah. Right? Because the work can't get done. The work can't get done. So. Yeah. Um, I, I love what you said, though, yeah. that you're not a fan. It's not fun to online. I don't think anyone really likes it, which mm. is why they don't do it. Mm. But then it causes issues because mm. then you'll have, you know, product and uh, design not yeah. talking to each other. Right. Right. So they have to like, come together. I, I, what I often will tell my clients is mm. um, carve out. So if you want a tactical way to do it, yeah. you want to be carving out at least 10 percent of every week mm. on alignment mm. at director level. And every promotion above that's another 10%. Mm. So by the time you're a VP, it's 20%, mm. 30%, et cetera. Um, and the practical way to do it would be if you, if you can be intentional about it, mm. make every Friday lunch an alignment conversation. So you invite another director out to mm. lunch and you just say, hey, what's going on in your department? What's mm. going on in your world? Here's what's going on in my world. I love that. And you just have some conversation. Uh, I've been recommending that to my clients for like the last two to three years. I've only had one that was able to do it. Oh, I see. And he, but he, he got his, he has an administrative assistant. Mm. He got the administrative assistant to schedule all mm. these. And he, he said the first time he went out to one of these, he said mm. it was really awkward and weird. But turns out he found out something that yeah. the other director was doing yep. that had he, they not had that conversation, it was going to blow up mm. because they were going to go in complete opposite directions. It, lunch paid for itself. So he said, so, so they committed at the end yeah. to do it every month from now on. Love it. So you, it, that's that's one way to kind of make it work. But I love your your point in this. Most of us don't like to do it. It feels like a waste of time. And it's interesting that um, 
at least uh, in Korea where I worked for seven years, like you don't really have a, a good functioning business relationship if you don't relate as a person. Now, that's not good for everybody. It's not necessarily applicable in the United States. And honestly, that's exhausting to be like, re like relationally involved with everybody you do business with. That's yep. exhausting. But I mean, sharing food and drink with somebody and just being a little bit civil Gosh, what, it's the art of conversation. Like, what, try, what'd try you, already. What did you email me the other day? What did I say? You said, you said, dude, all I do now is I eat, I drink. I think. I think. I teach. I talk. That's about it's, it. It's good. There's a lot I, of money I, in those five <laughs> verbs, right? There's a lot of money. Some going out, some coming in. <laughs> yeah, no, no, sure. A little bit, Um, and we'll go to the last one, because we talked about uh, teaching, being a high school coach as a director, yeah. to aligning, and we're going to get to the third one. But before we go on that, Carving out time to do alignment and not overthinking it and being a human and relating yeah. with other directors, I think that's great. And I think that's a great way to say, it. we're not, don't put pressure on yourself. Yeah. You're not trying to solve problems. You're yeah. just gonna, you're just connecting. What's going on in your world? That could be all you say. I mean, I think when I talk to students, um, we talk about networking. I think networking is nothing more than just being valuable to people, right? Yeah. Doing favors, getting favors. I mean, it's just, we don't have to overthink it.